Yes, welcome to the No State Project live from the Fortified Compound here in Mesa, Arizona. Glad to be here as people start logging on and watching the, the big broadcast here for today. Make sure we don't have any tech issues going on over here. Uh, yeah, we got, we got, okay, people starting to file into the big show. Um, on, uh, yeah, uh, it is uh, episode 93 of the big show. 93, uh, commercial free, of course, we every Wednesday we do it commercial free. Uh, kind of get some of that out of the way, but uh, glad to be here. Uh, you want to join me on the big show. I don't know if I really give that information out right now, but I do want to thank uh, Dan in New Hampshire for helping support the show, Chris in California, and uh, uh, Nelson in Maine. I do appreciate all the support of the show. If you'd like to help support the big show, uh, you can do so. Go to markstevens.net, uh, and you can do that. A lot of stuff to get to. Now, if someone's asking, so if you could do anything, what would be the one thing you could do to politics to work towards your end? One thing, I guess it would be making support voluntary, not compulsory. That would go a long way to fixing so many of the problems uh, that we associate with government. Most of the abuse, I think, takes place simply because you have no choice. You either pay or you go to jail. So uh, I think. Uh, getting if there was one thing, I guess that's a good question. If there was one thing, uh, that yeah, that would be a pretty good place to start. Uh, getting rid of compulsory uh, support, uh, yeah, I think that would go a long way into uh, relieving these problems. Uh, I guess other things that would go, uh, you would absolutely strip immunity from judges and prosecutors. Uh, it would only be a qualified immunity if that and uh, government employees having to carry their own insurance uh, in order to be on the job. Uh, that, that's a big one. But yeah, getting rid of the compulsory nature of the support is really what keeps the prison system, you know, that keeps the ruling class in place. So yeah, that would be the big one. That would be the big one. Because all you have to do if you've got, a, uh, if you've got agencies that are out of control uh, is to just withdraw your support monetarily. You just you just don't pay them anymore. Uh, they don't have a mechanism then uh, that's accepted, commonly accepted, uh, to 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 continue getting payment. So that's that would be the big one. So uh, yeah, that's a pretty good question to start the uh, the big show there. Um, from what I understand, all judges, prosecutors, and police officers do have liability insurance for their actions through their employer. Is that not the case? They do. And that's something that I talk about on the show all the time. At the federal level, there is no bond. There is no insurance. There's nothing. You, you have no choice but to file a tort complaint against them. They'll say a Bivens type action, stuff like that. At the state level, they do self-insure. And that's why I do advocate uh, when they damage, uh, damage us to file a claim against the insurance. I've, I've done entire shows just on that. But what I'm talking about is the police officer having his own insurance not connected and provided by the employer. So uh, it makes it, make, you know, they stay, you know, because this way, if you've got a real, if you've got a real bad one, it's a lot easier to get rid of them. Yeah, personal bonds or uh, insurance is, I, I think, a much better way to go. Um, it's very rare for state agencies to cut loose their own employees. Uh, they usually go to the carpet and do whatever they can to support them. Uh, you know, it's it's. In, in fact, that actually dovetails in pretty nice with what I wanted to start the show off with here today. Uh, so you know what I'm talking about. If you're on YouTube and you've seen the the title of the, the tentative title of the big show here today. And if, uh, it sounds like it would only serve the insurance companies more so than the people that needed to be covered for their liabilities. You know, the, the insurance company's taking a hell of a risk because uh, you don't have a government one to, to back them up. You don't have immunity. So there would have, you know, there would be a pretty, uh, I, I think there would, you know, high risk people are probably not going to be able to get the insurance and they won't be able to get the job. So even if you've got somebody who gets elected uh, in that situation, if they can't get insurance, or maybe that's got to be a part of before you're able to get on the ballot to lead an agency, 
you have to have the insurance. Yeah, I guess that, that kind of settles that. They have to be able to show liability or a bond uh, to be able to get that. Because uh, like I mentioned, this, this goes really nice with the title of the show, what I want to talk about before we start taking calls. Uh, this is kind of a rare thing that actually happened in the past uh, 10 days because there are two lawsuits uh, before two judges regarding a, sh uh, a school shooting. And there were two decisions that were made. One judge held as the law demands that government agents, including police officers, have no duty to protect anybody. In fact, I love in California, in the uh, Salza versus City of Antioch case, the police, uh, the the, uh, the the judges actually ruled that the police police officers. This I, I try to get the quote direct here. Police officers have no statutory duty to do anything. <laughs> Imagine that. You've got more responsibility working at Walmart than a police officer does who straps on a gun. You know, you see, the protect and serve is just a public relations. A logo, you know, thing. it's got nothing to do with what they're there to actually do unless by protect you're, you're talking about the ruling class and protecting them. Judge Beth Bloom, uh, on the same day that a county judge, Patty, Ing Patty Henning, came to the opposite conclusion. So uh, let me give a little more context here. Uh, the school district, this is from the New York Times, the school district and sheriff's office in a Florida county that is home to uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School had no constitutional duty to protect the students there during the deadly February massacre. A federal judge has said in a ruling. This is, of course, uh, Beth Bloom. Uh, the decision was made, and I tried to find the actual decision before the show, and maybe during, you know, after the show when I post this again, because uh, I will be pulling the live video down. Uh, maybe I will actually be able to find it. Maybe people who are listening, if you can find me a copy, the actual decision from Judge Bloom, I would love to have that. Um, but uh, the decision was made in a lawsuit filed by 15 students who said they would suffer trauma during the four February 14th attack in Parkland, Florida. A total of 17 students and staff members lost their lives. Uh, 17 others were injured. I wonder if the uh, the staff, the actual state employees, if they brought an action, if they would also say that the government had no duty to protect their own employees, that that would be interesting. Might make a judge's head explode. Uh, prosecutors are seeking a death penalty for Nicholas Cruz, 20, the former Stoneman Douglas student who is accused of opening fire at the school on Valentine's Day. He has pleaded not guilty, but his lawyers have said he would plead guilty in exchange for a life sentence. The December 12th ruling by Judge Beth Bloom came on the same day, I didn't, wow, that's right, same day that a county judge, Patty Henning, came to the opposite conclusion. Judge Henning found that Scott Peterson, the armed sheriff's deputy who heard the gunfire but did not run in and try to stop the attack, did not have an obligation to confront Mr. Cruz. Oh, no, did have an obligation to confront Cruz. The two decisions in rapid succession highlight an assumption often made the belief that the public has a right to receive protection from police officers. But police officers, in fact, generally are not any under any legal obligation to protect people or citizens who are not in their custody. Remember, I've talked about this for 20-something years. And so what they do here is they, they're, they're quoting... Um, Neither the Constitution nor state law impose a general duty upon police officers or other government officials to protect individual persons from harm, even when they know the harm will occur, said Darryl, Darren Hutchinson, a professor and associate dean at the University of Florida School of Law. Uh, police can watch someone attack you, refuse to intervene, and not violate the Constitution. The Supreme Court has repeatedly held that the government only has a duty to protect persons who are in custody. Courts have rejected the argument that students are in custody of school officials while they are on campus. Custody is narrowly confined to situations where a person loses his or her freedom to move freely and seek assistance on their own 
such as prisons, jails, or mental institutions. So I've spoken many, many times on this particular issue where they say, well, there is a duty to protect, but a duty to protect society as a whole. So the analogy I've over, always used is an insurance company. Well, we said we'd have coverage for you, but the coverage is for all of our customers. We can't just, you know, file, you know, you can't, we can't just process a claim for one or two or three. We, this is for the entire customer base. Now, no one's going to accept that. That's ridiculous. And even if you excuse them on these other ones where it's just, you know, you know, somebody at large shooting people, you're talking about a school, which is a government agency, a government, you know, agency there. And, and you're talking, and also a sheriff's deputy who is there specifically as security for the school to turn around and say that even though his job is security and okay, which security is, you know, to keep the kids safe, keep the employees safe and people safe to then turn around and say that as a security official, there was no duty to protect them. Even if we take out of this, actually confronting the shooter, he was still not protecting the kids. So I necessarily wouldn't argue that the police, you know, oh, they have to be in physical custody. I know there has to be a special relationship. Now, if a police officer says, I got your back, I will protect you, now he's liable under the current law. But if he just says, Abba Fongo, you're on your own, it happened in New York. It was a known killer, a, a, and a private man got hurt while the police watched him confront and neutralize this killer. He got hurt doing that, and the police had no responsibility. They just sat there and watched. They didn't do anything. They just sat there and watched. They didn't do anything. So here, security, it, it, it's mind-blowing how they will go to protect the king's men. It is absolutely nauseating. Let's throw this in, too. School is compulsory. If you don't send your kids there, you go to jail. Go to jail. And yet, could you imagine in trying to sell that? You this imagine this is why they don't have to sell something because they they got a prison system. They'll just lock you up. Well, we got this wonderful service over here. We're gonna teach your kids because it it's some you know society needs this. Very important. And I'll put your butt in jail. You don't put your kids in my in, in the school. I got a question. Are my kids going to be safe there? Are you going to protect? No. No. The only one who's not going to be safe in this situation here is you. If you don't put those damn kids in the school. Now, see, they don't have any problem rushing into a house if there's a little bit of marijuana. Oh, cops will run in with guns drawn. Oh, they'll shoot black people running away from them. But a white person with a gun, they just cower outside. Maybe that's what they should do. Just say, as the ongoing shooting, when you're in that situation, somebody has some pot. They'll send the SWAT team in. It, it's just uh, no duty to protect. Again, how do, you, how do you sell something like that without a prison system? And that really is the way it is. The only way that they will rush in with guns drawn is if you don't put your kids in those schools. Then they have no problem coming in with guns drawn. They don't sit outside waiting. They're not, they're not, they're not cowards when it comes to a, uh, some herb. Yeah, tens of thousands of of armed military type raids on American homes, but have an active shooter and they stay outside. Oh, the hometown heroes. Oh, yeah, hometown heroes. Yeah, the police. 
Yeah. Oh, somebody doesn't have, uh, is selling uh, Lucy's, you know, cigarettes. Oh, yeah, then, then, of course, use, use deadly force. Deadly force. Oh, but, but, but have an active shooting situation. Nah, but we're not here to do that. We're not here to do this. We are here to raid American homes. We are here to take people out of their cars at gunpoint on the street if they have some pot. We are here to pull up on children like Tamir Rice and shoot them dead. Philando Castillo, another one. They're very brave when it comes to shooting people on traffic stops. You know, it, it, it really is disgraceful. And it's one of the, it, it, it's just another shining example. I'm pretty sure that this county judge is going to get overturned because the law is squarely uh, uh, against her. I, you know, she, she, I, I think he have a judge here who's trying to do the right thing, which is rare, and hold the, one of the king's men responsible. But it's going to get appealed, and it's going to get reversed. There's no doubt. There's no doubt in my mind that it's going to get reversed. I've spoken about this so many times because when I found out about this years ago, because I had understood that what makes you a citizen, okay, what, what, what the whole system is, you know, the, is based on that there is a an actual organization, a legitimate org called the state, that the state is comprised of citizens. So maybe a lot of people have not actually heard this yet. So it's good that this came up so we can discuss this again. A state is not the ground. It's a particular legal thing or political thing. that has a meaning to that. It is a body politic organized under a government occupying a certain territory. Okay, and I'll put citations, uh, U.S. versus Texas, I think, is, is one of them. But don't quote me. I'll, I'll, I'll get in the, uh, in, the, in the good video. Uh, I will have the citations about what a state is. Uh, we know that just people don't make a state and people wanting to be a state uh, and saying they're a state doesn't make them a state. Because like I wrote in, in Adventures in Legal Land in 2003, there's still talk 20, what, 15 years later, there's still talk about a Palestinian state and there isn't one. So what makes one a citizen? Now, again, we can go to, I have court citations, Lurie versus the United States is only one. And uh, you go to the Massachusetts Constitution about a body politic being comprised of citizens. If the body politic isn't comprised of citizens, then I, 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 then I'm at a complete loss as to what it's supposed to actually be. Uh, and so, according to Luria versus United States, and what we know historically through common law and from, you know, a thousand years ago in England, uh, the citizen is a member of the body politic, owing a duty of allegiance and return for duty of protection. That these are reciprocal obligations one consideration for the other. Now, that's almost a direct quote, and I'll have that in the video. If there really is no duty to protect you, so we've got two sides. We'll examine this in, in, in two ways. If we can see that legally there's no, there, legally, politically, whatever, there's no duty to protect you, even if you're the member of the public, even if they say that, because here you've got a school, which is a very large gathering of people in public at a government agency where attendance is compulsory. Look, that if there's no duty there, there's no duty. It doesn't, even if we're not talking about the individual, there's no duty to protect you. Now, could there be a duty to protect you if some judge said so? No. Why? Because can you create duties of allegiance and protection by threatening perfect strangers with jail and harm in order for them to pay you for uh, pay you and support you, I think that's a no-brainer. I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm personally don't see how that's even remotely possible. Uh, I would have to say no. You don't create obligations 
by forcing people to give you money. Now, I'm sure there are people that will disagree with me on that. And uh, reasonable people can disagree. But here, if you think that forcing somebody on the threat of, of punishment, a perfect stranger, I got to you always have to remember, a perfect stranger, you have no relationship with them. You think that forcing them to give you money creates a duty of allegiance in return for your duty of protection, then no, I disagree. No, you'll have to, you can come on the show at 218-632-9399, uh, PASCO 2020 with the pound sign. And you can try to explain using logic, facts, and reason how you can literally force a stranger to give you money and how that creates obligations. I'd, I'd love, love to see this. So that's why uh, there could be duties of allegiance in return for any duty of protection. And they openly say there's no duty of protection. This is just another, look, there's no way the state court case is going to not be overruled. It will be overturned. And the county and the police, the sheriff will, sh will face no responsibility whatsoever for doing nothing. Nothing. Oh, yeah, I know Captain Bonespur would have went in even if he didn't have a gun, but he wasn't there that day. Yeah, video footage and other evidence shows Mr. Peterson, the only armed officer at the school, staying outside while shots could be heard exploding from inside the school. Mr. Peterson also launched a code red to put the entire school on lockdown. Well, at least he did that. The county lawsuit argued that Mr. Peterson had a special relationship with students and staff members at the school because he was specifically assigned to offer them protection. But he's one of the king's men. And, uh, yeah. It, so, to get back, uh, if what makes anybody a citizen is being is membership in the body politic with the owing a duty of allegiance and return for duty protection and there are no duties of allegiance and protection yeah i said duty it's really what it comes down to uh well then there are no citizens and if there are no citizens you don't have a body politic and if you don't have a body politic you don't have a government or an estate what you have is what i have said on this show so many times, you literally just have men and women who are forcing strangers like us, like me and you, to give them money. It is criminal. That's, you know, I don't accept the double stand. That's why I start most of shows as believing in anarchy, meaning no rulers, that it is wrong to lie, steal, kill, and cheat people because you call yourself a government. Forcing strangers to give you money. Whatever the purpose you say is, it's for is not relevant. Why you're doing it is not relevant. This is not like the ethical dilemma of uh, uh, is it wrong for a starving man with no other options to steal a loaf of bread to feed his family? You're talking about people who are generally pretty well off forcing strangers to give them money, to rule them, to live a life of absolute luxury where there's a serious double standard where you can literally lie, steal, kill, and cheat people, and it's okay. You can do things that are grotesquely criminal for the individual, for people who are not part of the ruling class. If I drop bombs on on uh, on a bus of children, I'm as hardcore a criminal as you could get, and I deserve a firing squad for that at least life imprisonment but if you call yourself a government and then launch those bombs into a bus of children collateral damage there's a line from one of my favorite movies in justice for all it's nickel and dime nickel and dime if he's not in, if he's if it's not today it's tomorrow he'll be back in you can always appeal it now he can't he's dead that's the way they look at us. We're not human beings. It's nickel and dime. We're not important to them. And that's why they'll excuse in and, and, and their followers will excuse it. Well, it's okay because they're the government. And even the agents that I've had on the phone. Well, it's the law. 
Really? And you have any evidence that these apply to anybody? Well, we don't need evidence. So if I did it criminal, but it's okay if you do the same thing because it's legal, because the laws allow it, but you don't need any evidence because you don't need any evidence. And why is that? Because you say so. You said you don't need evidence. Oy vey. So again, you know, this is what I've talked about so many times. This is why we can be confident going into court when they attack us. Not that we're going to win every time. No, but we can effectively defend ourselves and stand up to these people. And I'm not talking about ranting on Twitter about fake news and rats. We can actually defend ourselves with logic and holding them to their burden of proof. Again, it doesn't mean that you know, just because you completely annihilate the prosecution's case and they actually object to the the qualifications of their own witness, that they fought tooth and nail to get on that stand because it's about appearances. It's about appearances. Don't tell me any different. We're looking at another damn case here where children were murdered and a sheriff's deputy who was there specifically for security, Judge Bloom, what is it, Betty Bloom? Beth Bloom. Let's see if I can get a picture of this. Lawyer ruled that those facts, the, those facts didn't matter. Didn't matter. No duty to protect them. Their security. Their security. Well, they're not in custody. See, this is where the tried and true political crap called semantics, if, if somebody would say that, it's just semantics. You're just, you're just trying to use a word to get out of the consequences of the facts. And the facts are when you coerce parents to put their children into that building for so many hours a day, and a month and years when you are willing to put the parents in jail for, for, to put those kids in to turn around and say that that's not a special relationship or custody. One of these days they're going to turn around and someone is going to get shot. And hopefully, you know, not killed, but they'll be shot. Well, I'm not asking they get shot. They'll be shot in a police cruiser. And some lawyer is going to argue, well, it's not the police officer's fault. He had no responsibility to keep him safe because he wasn't at the police station. I'm sure someone like Rudy Giuliani would actually argue something like that. Well, you know, the cop wasn't under oath, so what do you what do you what do you do? So it's too bad that this judge in the state court is going to get overturned lightning fast. Right? At least it's something that this judge. Henniger was willing to do the right thing for once. But yeah, it will definitely be overturned. You know, so this is why it's been a constant thing about there is no state. You know, I used to talk about that all the time. There is no state. But when they say that there's a state, that's why I actually haven't government indicted. I actually haven't government indicted uh, a quote, you know, some, uh, from a... Uh, From somebody, uh, a lawyer up in Idaho, who didn't like when I confronted him on the words that he was using. And I'm not saying that lawyers constantly use and only use words of art. No, that's not what I'm saying. But uh, they do use technical terms, even outside of court. So he was insisting and kept on using the word state. So I just took a moment and said, Excuse me, sir, could you tell me what? you mean by the word state, you know, because he's saying the laws apply within the state. I said, sir, could you just take a moment and, and explain what you mean when you use the word state? What information are you trying to convey to me when you say the word state? And he really didn't like that because they just throw it around because lawyers do understand and know that they're using technical terms. And the word state is a word of art. It does not mean the ground. It does not mean North America. It does not mean the part of North America between uh, Mexico and, and Canada. It's a very particular word with a very precise meaning. It, it's not meant to convey the ground known as Arizona. That's why I make the distinction 
you think your laws apply to me because I'm physically, physically in Arizona. Arizona is the word that we use to describe the, the, the land area here. It is not a political term, as far as I know. It existed prior to the United States. So as far as I'm pretty certain of that. Pretty certain of that. So, um, yeah. All right. So this is why we can be confident if they charge us, we can go into court. It's why I used to say uh, and challenge and at least, in, you know, prosecutors for evidence they have a client because their client, uh, you know, a lawyer walking into court claiming to represent somebody uh, who doesn't actually represent them, that that's grounds for disbarment. That's a pretty serious offense for a lawyer to do. I don't think I'm talking uh, out of school here. That's a very serious offense. Uh, lawyers have been disbarred. I'll have to look up where they claim they filed a class action lawsuit and did not have the permission or the knowledge of the people who were supposedly part of this class action. So here it's the same if, if somebody goes into, if I went into court and I claim to represent the state and I didn't, I probably could, would go to jail and probably deserve to go to jail. Uh, but the thing is, I can present as much evidence of that, that I represent the state as a prosecutor can. Because in my experience, and yeah, Jerry Millen Phillips, you are one of those people, even though you're not an inside guy anymore. Uh, I've done it in court and I've asked prosecutors to actually produce evidence. I mean, evidence, not argument, evidence that they actually have a client. And not one, not one judge in all those years, uh, prosecutor, excuse me, in all those years has ever been able to do anything more than say that they're a prosecutor working for the state government or the county and show a bar card. Well, that doesn't prove that there's a state because what do you need to prove that there's a state? Really? Right? Remember, lawyer versus United States. You've got to have citizens. You've got to have a body politic. You have to have that organized under the government. So let's knock out whether there's citizens in a, in a body politic. How do you do that? you got to show proof of reciprocal obligations. You gotta have proof of reciprocal obligation. We have some callers lining up. Uh, hopefully, we don't have any tech issues today. We have area code 417. You're live on the No State Project. What's your name? Where you're calling from? Hey, this is Daryl McClanahan in Missouri. And uh, you helped me several years ago. And uh, it was a driving under suspension. I was arrested in. I claimed no jurisdiction, and the uh, prosecutor didn't answer it, and the judge told her to answer it, and the lady judge was actually pretty decent. And, uh, you know, because she told the judge, laws of Kansas apply to him, and, and she said answering. And uh, she didn't meet the, I want to just commend you for continuing. You look pretty weary sometimes when I followed you. Hold on, sweetie, I'm on the phone real quick. And uh, I just want to commend you for in encouraging people to stand up against these people. You did help me with the motion. I did many motions, but the judge, I had ran for, I was going to run for city council in a little town and I started to have them audited by the state of Missouri. And they put, uh, they had a, a police chief put a couple felonies on me and it was a nightmare. I actually have a civil rights lawsuit in federal court over that right now. But you were talking about the right these people saying, these police saying they have no duty to serve. It's pretty funny that the Missouri public defenders are being sued by the ACLU and it's in federal court and they have a motion filed last June in federal court that has, the judge has not ruled on it. Actually, the clerks that do all the work haven't ruled on it. But the Missouri public defenders have claimed that even though they're under budget, not defending all these people that, that have been railroaded to jail because they didn't get any Sixth Amendment, uh, the, the, they claimed uh, sovereign immunity. And we know that this is a joke. So, so the attorney that was appointed by the state to represent you is going to say he has no duty to represent you. These people are out of control. And uh, I just thought I'd make you aware of that that might be some good reading for for, you know, and these people are disgusting, like you said, uh, excellent, you know, they'll break into your house for a little bit of weed, and they'll swat team you, but whenever there's a, a white guy, you know, and I, I like this guy down in Mexico, Gavin Stein, I, I kind of think he's an ass at times, 
because uh, I'm, I'm more of a nationalist. He's more of a patriot. I, I don't know what we're going to have to do to get our republic back. I'm 51 years old. I have children. And I, I want to have some kind of freedom. You know, I, I, I like the idea of no government or no rules. The debate war at Southern with Lurk and Rose is really good. We have to have some kind of, I mean, if you're a godly person, uh, the, the Bible sets down rules for how men have to live. We have to have some kind of rules in society. We can't just be killing babies and, you know, uh, having people live however they want and put that in front of my children. If you want to keep that in your bedroom, keep that in your bedroom, please, but don't put it in front of my children well, and, uh, you know, forcing us to go to these schools. And, uh, I just had to call cause I listened to you and, and I don't have a, I'm, uh, finances. We don't have a computer up. I'm, I'm stuck limited to a phone and everything. So I just really want to commend you. Uh, we got to give them help. I appreciate that. Uh, a couple things here. Uh, as an anarchist, it's not about no rules. It's about no rulers. And the rules would be basically do yeah. no harm. Something that's based on the basic, you know, se uh, you know secular, uh, logical, secular, you know, uh, ethics. Uh, you know, where we, and I've discussed that on the show before. I don't think it's a matter of, hey, don't shove your morals down on me. There are certain things we, 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 uh, generally have as, you know, as humans, you know, we have empathy and, and, and things hurt us. We don't like that. We, uh, our own self interest, we're not going to hurt other people because one, it takes our own life into our hands and, and it's just a reciprocal thing. We don't want to be hurt. So we extend it to other people. I got to ask this, this Gavin Stein, is that the proud boy guy? No, he was, uh, he was at the Bundy deal and he was up in Washington and he was filming the police and they took his camera and he really did a dumb move on filming the police by himself. And he had a, he was in a small town, in a little town in Washington. Like I was in a little town and take some people on. These people are a gang and, uh, he didn't have anyone filming. They said he interfered with what they were doing. So they arrested him, charged him with a couple felonies and. Uh, being that he has a graphic design business and money, he, he, he packed his family up in a van and he's now down in Mexico and he's thumbing his nose and he says we should have open borders and, and you know, he, he, he has a lot of views I don't agree with. But I do, I mean, cause I'm the advocate of Shaver Cox, uh, uh, everybody check out Lone Star 1776. America has political prisoners. They want to, sh uh, shut political dissidents up in America, you know, uh, he, he was a, a guy up in Alaska that ran for, for Congress, a, a libertarian minded, uh, liberty loving guy. Check out Schaefer Cox and, uh, Larry Platt, gun owners of America have spoke up. And, you know, this bump stock deal, they are legislating. They are leaving the attorney general to legislate, taking our private property away. And if you bought one of these bump stocks, I mean, I don't have one. I'm not going to lose any money, but I definitely have an opinion that that is private property. They, the bureaucrats have legislated, you have to destroy or give this to them and you get no compensation for your property. These are rulers and uh, we, we got an out of control government and uh, the people, you know, even fighting it over these traffic tickets and things like this, this is the way that we are throwing ourselves into the machinery. And, and we have to do that. We must stand up. Uh, we, we need court watchers. They don't want no recording. Why is there no recordings in the Supreme Court? Why are there no recordings in Missouri? Now, Colorado, I don't know about Arizona, a few states, they have recordings, but in Missouri, they can easily change the transcript. Uh, Charlottesville, yeah. Yeah. the young man, the young man Fields that, that went to jail, uh, or they've given him 400 years. I don't think that was first degree murder. I think it may have been a cowardly act that he was getting attacked and he forwarded the car into some innocent people. That's manslaughter. That is not premeditated murder and you know we have a case well it could be second you know, degree murder it could just be in the heat of the moment and he intended to you know to cause that damage i think at the well, I, I think bottom line well, how do we de demands. how do we determine his uh and i don't think he had i mean we don't know what you're absolutely right we don't know what his mindset was but i certainly don't think within a i i think more of of in a in the heat of a moment uh, it, it, it's not premeditated to, I, I went there and then, yeah, maybe he sent some, some jokes or nasty things, or he has opinions agree. And, uh, you know, I have a, you know, there are people that we have all, everyone need, deserves a fair shake. And I don't think the kid got a fair shake. You look at, uh, there's a Congressman Steve Stockman in Texas 
and he had the number one voting conservative record. And they got him on a uh, tax deal, uh, comp campaign contribution deal. Like they're going, trying to say Trump paid some bimbo off, uh, you know, uh, and they railroaded him to 10 years in federal prison. Uh, and you know, no victim, no crime. I'm, I'm, I'm so with you, but what people must start speaking up. We have to speak up all the time. I call in any radio show. I get on the, live chats, you know, I'll get on Rush Limbaugh's uh, live chat and I tell him, free Schaefer Cox, why don't you talk about, uh, uh, why don't you talk about the, talk about Senator Steve Stockman, you know, we have many of these, and they're just, you know, Rudy Davis and Aaron Davis, Lone Star 1776, uh, Adam Kokesh, when he got arrested, they put a video up right away, you know, he, uh, you know, so, so powerful what you said, these people won't defend our children where they, uh, impress them into their indoctr indoctrination and they're not going to defend their little lives when we're they've taken us away from them to as their protector and but yet they're going to swat team somebody's house and uh, shoot the dog for a bag of weed you know it, yeah, it's out of the, control the control pet, with yeah people. the shooting of the pet is it, pets that is i mean there's videos that are heartbreaking and, and how cops have, have yeah. done that and like you know the thing is if you're that much of a coward I've had dogs come after me. I used to ride a bike all the time, and and I, I used oh, to you kick them or you yell at them. They're not if you're a man. Come on, well, and I had a, you know um, you don't. I had I used to carry a screamer sticks, you know, the Filipino fighting sticks. So I would always carry one, uh, at least one with me. So it was you know you're able to keep the dog at bay. I've never felt you know in, in my whole life, and I'm not you know the youngest guy, but I'm not an old man, right? But I, I have been around and. I've never felt, you know, where it was necessary postman. that I kill a dog. You look at postmen, all the postmen and the guys delivering gifts. They're not shooting no dogs. They're not getting bit by dogs. You, you give the dog a kick in the jaw if it's really that, you know. And, and uh, you, you know, there's a video here in Missouri. Springfield just came out. They they raided some house that was some mess people, and they had left a camera. They had a hidden camera in the house. And when the cops were there, they were sitting on the bed playing with the kitten throwing the kitten across the room, and then they're spitting on the people's floor, okay? And they're spitting on the people's floor that they just, you know, this is, uh, we are their, their, their chattel, or their, we're their, you know, and uh, they got, I saw one today, the, the cops are in, in uh, Little Rock, they're driving around in the parking lot doing donuts, uh, two of them, one's got his lights off, if that was you or me, and we're driving around doing donuts in the parking lot, you know, just having fun or something. Say you weren't, you know, just a kid. You're trying to just, it would be criminal endangerment. And there was passengers. And if your kid was in there, they'd take your kid. I mean, uh, we have to fight these people tooth and nail. Well, and, let me jump and, in. Uh, let, me, let me let me jump in here. You know, because you know when you when you look at uh, what happens when we do something. Okay, one of the plebes, you and I, you know, little people. Uh, you can get a year in jail for not having a driver's license and you can get a year in jail for having a driver's license and not having it on you when a police officer stops you. You go to jail. You're at least going to spend some time in jail if they arrest you. You can look. At I haven't what, had one for 30 years. Well, well, that that's <laughs> great. But I, I'm, the compar I'm making a comparison here where. Yeah, I know. Where, where they took you, me to jail last time in Kansas. Well, well you have. Uh, someone like Dick Cheney, who shot a man in the face while he had been drinking, no jail time at all. He didn't even spend time at the police department as far as I remember. The know. ruling class. The ruling class. So, so uh, it, it, it's, you know, I spoke earlier about, you know, going again with the insurance and, and challenging these people. And I, I think uh, those are great things. And we need to, you, we need to publicly, you know, uh, uh, address them and, and have them. Uh, not be able to support their claims. Uh, I'm not saying necessarily I want to humiliate people, but I want to educate people that the people who are doing this cannot support their claims, and and that is really important. They are they can imagine this, uh, Dara. You go into a city council meeting, and the, no one on a city council, and they usually have the city attorney sitting there with them, and the city manager. Not a single one of them can make an ethical argument for the organization that they head up. Not one of them. Not one of them is able to produce any evidence whatsoever to counter our proof that they're a criminal organization. 
think, you know, those things need to be done. And I, I you know, I, I encourage it. You, don't you know what they constantly did with me with my case? You, I got a motion from you. I can't remember what it was. And, and uh, I filed it. And, and I also did a writ of main, mandamus. And, and the judge, every time the prosecutor would get up there and she had her ponytail, she's a female. And this is uh, Lexington, Lafayette County, Missouri. It's a, it's a little uh, county outside Kansas City, and they've made it a regulation that you can't, you have to own five acres or more to build a home. So they've stopped the expansion of Kansas City coming out there. So it's very cliquish community. It's very controlled of, uh, of, uh, good old boys there and everything. And, uh, you know, it's, I, it started off, I spoke at a council meeting about why is the water bill so high and, I was welcomed where I used to live with my children. Uh, years ago, I had uh, the children that are grown, and and uh, they didn't want to let me have any time. I asked for five more minutes, and I only spoke three. No, you won't be given any more time. And the police chief who eventually arrested me was there in my face, not allowing me to speak. Well, when I got into court for these judges, and when it, guess what? When the audit came out, I went around and got all the signatures door to door. I would go from... And this is part of my civil rights deal. I didn't realize it until my attorney, Warren Markowitz in Nevada, had read everything. And he said, Daryl, you know, all these times they stopped you, uh, that was a First Amendment violation. They would stop me and say, oh, you're suspicious taking these signatures. And uh, they were missing, they misappropriated $500,000. So they had a reason to not want me out there getting signatures to find out what criminals they are. And I got a lot of thank yous from the people that live there and everything, but I moved away. But I would make these motions and the, and this witch would just stand up there and she would just, uh, Mr. McClanahan has made these motions and I, I just don't understand them. And he would say, okay, I'm going to say again. Okay. Don't know what happened there, but uh, uh, I'm going to actually, uh, I, since I can't, get the callers on the show i'm gonna to have to um i'm gonna drop off i'm gonna cover a lot of ground here today and unfortunately i'm not gonna be live on the saturday show but i'm gonna do I, I will be pulling this video i should be pulling this video down getting the good video and the good audio um uh, and i know some people have said that youtube is censoring me and throttling my channel i think if i'm being throttled by anything it's probably by my 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 the, the cable provider uh, as opposed to youtube uh you know we have to, and somebody mentioned something here i i've got to address in the last couple minutes here i can do the show is this becoming a freeman channel uh that was that is not something that i am i'm not a freeman i'm not a sovereign or a sovereign citizen however the, i'm an anarchist i do not believe in a ruling class um i i have been on been doing the show all these years on this show in particular i've been very very clear about my position that i'm an anarchist and that uh there, there, there is no government I, you know, I, they're, they're, they're just men and women who force us to, to, to give them money. Uh, you know, I've been very clear on that. I, I've done almost entire shows where we debunk these, you know, these, uh, you know, these arguments of freemen and sovereign types. And so, no, this is not going to be. I, and, and if I have to, I will I will ban and block people who are persistently uh, posting about that stuff. Uh it, it's uh, that's not what the channel is about. It's about anarchy. I mean, gee, uh, how many times you got to say anarchy, not Freeman sovereign type stuff. I uh, have gone through in, in many years. Well, not too many. Uh, I I have uh, something that they don't have on the website because I use logic. I use reason. I go based on the facts. I want the context. I want more context. You know, the, so the more facts we have, the more we understand the situation, the, the better the judgments and arguments that we can make. And so I have a success story page on the website. Not everything that's been tossed out is up there, but we have documentary proof. Now, people can can go up there and, 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 and you know, you can, you know, every website, everybody's going to have their critics. And, and people will say, even though the motion was literally granted and the reasons given why the motion was granted, the prosecution did not present the facts, the evidence, and did not present a, a a legal reason why they weren't required to. And even then, there'll be a handful of critics, just a few, that will say that the motion has never been granted. That the only reason why the motion was, was yes, the motion was granted, but not because the motion had any merit. 
So even though the motion said that the prosecution didn't have the evidence and that's why he threw it out, it still had nothing to do with it. You, you got to take that with a grain of salt. Look at the actual facts. The motion has been granted. Tickets have been thrown out. Tax assessments. I have documents on about tax assessments. So that is something the Freeman and Sovereign Times don't have. They don't have a proven track record. First of all, their positions are not logical. They're not based on facts. They're not based on even the law. Their legal interpretations are usually garbage. If they get the legal interpretation right, they're usually cherry picking or the case has been overthrown, which they're not telling you. So I take it from, I go from a standpoint, look, and keeping the burden of proof on the accuser. Okay. We don't come up with stories. Well, we're going to defeat your argument with a better argument. No, we're going to defeat your argument by showing that there's no evidence. We're going to defeat your witnesses by having you, Mr. Prosecutor, and you, Mr. Judge, you're going to say the witness isn't qualified to testify. You're going to have some cock, you know, some cock and bull story. You're going to have some ridiculous excuse that asking for facts is actually asking for a legal conclusion that any half idiot can see through that only an idiot would say was valid. But that doesn't mean we don't have a track record and that we haven't been successful and that we won't continue to be successful. So it, it, it is not a Freeman channel. If, if I have to spend more time looking at this chat and block people because of the Freeman stuff, then I will. And if you come on the channel and you start using uh, uh, prejudicial words, you start using the N word, you're blocked and a discussion, which somebody got blocked today. Uh, but it's not a Freeman channel. Working as an anarchist to get to a voluntary society, no ruling class. That's what we want to see. I uh, appreciate everyone tuning in today to the big show, episode 93. Thanks again, of course, to the support of the show, Dan and Bill in New Hampshire. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, Chris in california yeah, so and, and and rob uh, i do appreciate uh sending he was the one actually sent me the one of the ones who sent me the link about the uh the court case i talked about today about beth bloom uh saying that the, a security a sheriff's deputy acting as a security guard a security officer for a government agency no deal to protect so i appreciate his continued support at so hey till then salud.